Take a look at 20, chapter 22 on page 1048, uh, Pasuk Aleph. It's about eight lines from the bottom, page 1048. You should not see your fellow's ox or sheep wandering around and ignore them. You must return them to your, to your brother. If your brother's not near you, or you don't know who he, who he is, take the animal into your house, keep him with you until your brother comes to search for him, and return it to him. We have over here the mitzvah of returning lost objects. Now, I'm not going to go into all the halachic and the halachic and all the ins and outs of halacha because it has to do with where you're living. Is it a city of mostly Jews, a city of mostly non-Jews? Does the, does the item have a, 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 an identifiable sign on it? And so on and so forth. These are, but the Torah says essentially the, the concept of finders, keepers, losers, weepers is not a Torah concept. The Torah concept, you find something, return it. You have an obligation to return it unless we could assume the owner has given up hope, he's not going to give it back, and then you get the technical halachas about what makes it yours. The, uh, uh, the Gemara says like this, there was once a queen, as a medrash, actually a medrash, there was once a queen who lost a bracelet of something, a very expensive bracelet. So they put out a, a royal edict that anybody who finds a bracelet and returns it within 30 days will be handsomely rewarded. And if you return it after 30 days, you're going to be executed. So one of the uh, Amoroim or Tanoim, Rav Shmuel ben Susroti was his name, he found the queen's bracelet. And on day 31, he returned it. So when he came in, the queen said to him, uh, well, thank you very much. Maybe you didn't, you must not have heard the royal announcement that if you return it after 30 days, you're executed. He said, I heard it. She said, well, maybe you didn't understand that, you know, we, we, we meant it, you know. He said, oh, I understood. Said, and maybe you didn't find it till, till after 30 days. No, no, I found it well before 30 days. Mm -hmm. So why did you only return it now? He said, if I would returned it within 30 days, you would have thought that I'm returning it because I'm intimidated by you. I'm returning it because the Torah says we have to return it. Oh, and she said, what a magnificent God the Jews have, and she rewarded him, everybody lived happily ever after. <laughs> now, that's what the Medrash says. Now, there are technical laws, by the way, there's a difference if you find a Jewish item or a non jews item, there are technical laws over here. But at the end of the day, the concept of finding something, what we understand when we find something is that there's somebody on the, somebody on the receiving end over here who lost it. It's somebody who's lost it. Oh, good, my lucky day, I found it. Yeah, you're, maybe you're lucky that you found it. But I heard about a great rabbi uh, uh, was sitting, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Moshe Kramer was sitting, and somebody was about, there's a bug crawling across the table. Somebody was about to, or on the floor, somebody was about to kill the bug. Just, just as a reaction, just kill the bug. He said, L leave the bug alone. That bug has children who are waiting for her to come home. I mean, our reaction is, hey, well, yeah. remember, there's somebody on reason. I don't say don't kill the bugs, you know. So he picked it up on a paper, and he took it out. He put it outside the window on the paper. Why kill it if you don't have to kill it? We have a certain knee-jerk reaction. Oh, good, my lucky day, I found it. Yeah, maybe your lucky day, but there's somebody else who lost it. There's actually a story that took place here in Israel. There were two men in a hotel up north, and they were cutting a business deal. They had about $10,000 cash on the table. They're cutting a business deal, and all of a sudden, a, a, uh, uh, they hear an alarm. Uh, what do you call it? There's a, 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 a there, there, there's a panic. There, somebody yells out. There's a chayfus. There's a suspicious object in the lobby of the bank, in the lobby of the hotel. So everybody clears the hotel. The police sappers come and the police sappers take a look at it. Okay, they turn 20 minutes later. They sound the all clear, and they go back to the table, and ten thousand dollars is gone. You know, the, the, the bombs or no bombs, ten thousand dollars ain't gonna last too long on a table. Okay, look around for the money. They can't find it. About a week later, as a guest comes into the hotel, from guy. He's walking through the lobby, and he sees there's a big flower plant in the lobby. And under the flower plant, he sees it, like he sees a little green piece of something green peeking out from under the under the flower pot. He pushes it back. There's ten thousand dollars under the flower pot. Turned out, one of the foreign workers had taken the money and put it under the flower pot because they they and waiting for the lobby to clear so they have an opportunity to take it. That's a, imagine that torture. Imagine spending a week and the lobby doesn't clear. You got ten thousand dollars under there, and you're too afraid to go. Imagine, imagine what kind of gehenim that is. So, uh, so, so, so this guy finds the money and he goes to speak to a rav, and he says to the rav, "Listen, I found ten thousand dollars cash. It was under the thing in the lobby. What's the halacha?" So the rav checked the ins and outs. He says, "By the letter of the law, you can keep the money." He says, "Great, ten thousand dollars." He goes home. He can't sleep that night. So I got I got ten thousand dollars, but somebody lost ten thousand dollars. How can I keep the ten thousand dollars? So he goes back to the hotel. He says, I want to see your register of guests for the last week. Takes a look at the register. He calls every single guest. Did you lose something? No. Did you lose something? Did you lose something? Yes. What did you lose? $10,000. I found your money. I'm coming over. He drives over to the house. And the guy says to him, wow, this is unbelievable. I can't believe you're returning the money. 
He says, yeah, you know, I went and spoke to the Rav. The Rav said, technically, according to Allah, I can keep it, but we all know it's yours, so I'm giving it back to you. The guy says, one second. What did the Rav say? He said that, you know, according to halacha, by letter of law, I could keep it. It's you, you give it up, up, but I'm, you know, we all know it's yours. He goes, no, oh, no, I don't take handouts. If it, by the letter of law it's yours, you're keeping the money. I don't want the money. I don't want any gifts. I don't accept gifts. He says, come on, give schmiffs. We all know it's yours. Don't, don't confuse the tech, the tech. He says, no, I'm not taking the money. I don't want any gifts from you. He says, do you have a son? He says, yeah, he's downstairs in the car. How old is he? He's 23. You have a daughter? Yeah, she's 19. Well, let, let them meet. Huh? The couple met, and they gave the couple of money, ten thousand dollars. Everybody lived happily ever after. Right? Just document the story. It happened here in Israel. And he added to the life. You know, I found it. <laughs> it's mine. Yeah, but there's a Jew out there who's, who's lost it. So even if you are allowed to keep it, it's thing. You listen. Okay. If it's a goy, there are halachas that you're allowed to keep. If it's a goy, there is something called there. The, the, the law changes. But if you do return it, it's a Kiddush Hashem. There was just this incident. You remember an incident a couple of years ago? It was, very, it was all over the paper. There was a, a guy who was actually studying. I had a student, him as a student in the other yeshiva at Beis Yisrael. This guy bought a table from a little old lady. Him and his wife bought a, t- a new desk. And they were bringing it into the house. And in order to fit it into the room, they had to pull the drawers out of the desk. When he pulled out the drawer, I think it was $98,000 cash that was stuffed in an envelope behind the drawer. And so he returned it to her. He returned it to the lady. The main national news in the United States. $98,000. Oh, a lot of money. I could get used to that. Right? The guy returned. They returned. 98 to 98. A bit tremendous kid as Hashem. Yes, technically, he might have been able to keep it. Technically, I, I th- he, technically maybe, yeah. On the other hand, you're, on the other hand, you're what he you called. You're, uh, you know, you know there, there, there's, a, there's a God in the world. What's, more, what's worth it? You, you know what kind of kid Hashem you're making? A kid Hashem is worth more than $98,000. That's, that, that, that's the rule. That's the... Back to you. Let's see if you can... Does he give you back? That's a good question. He doesn't necessarily give you back $98,000, but you will certainly not lose out. You never lose out doing a mitzvah. You never, you never lose doing a mitzvah. You will never lose out doing a mitzvah. You could only gain from doing a mitzvah. Whether you see the payback now or see the payback 20 years from now, you will, you will only be paid back for a mitzvah. You'll never lose doing a mitzvah. It may be painful, and it may be difficult, because most good things in life are, they, they take some pain. Most difficult, most good thing, Lou Ferrigno. Remember Lou Ferrigno? The Incredible Hulk? Never heard of Lou Ferrigno? Or Incredible Hulk? So they once he became, at a certain point, he became Mr. Universe. Or Mr. World, or Mr. Universe. You know, Joe, Joe Mr. Muscle Man. So they once asked Lou Ferrigno, how did you become so muscular and so perfectly shaped and everything else? Lou Ferrigno said, I used to pump iron in the weight room until I passed out from the pain. So, you know, you want anything good in life, you're going to have to put a little bit of pain. Andre Agassi? Friend of Andre Agassi, right? Tennis player? Andre Agassi said that when he was, when he was what do you call it, uh, 12 years old, he came in second in the tournament. And when they were walking out of the tournament, his father took the second place trophy and he threw it in a trash can. He said, we didn't enter the tournament to play. We didn't enter the tournament to finish second. You know, you want something, like you're going to have to work for it. These guys, these guys work for it, and they work. Oh, they were. I had a guy here once told me he was, I think, Florida State University. There was a girl at Florida State who made the United States Olympic swim team. Girl that he made the Olympics. He told me that between the ages of nine and seventeen, there were four days, four days between the ages of nine and seven that she was not in a pool. And these people are crazy, by the way. These people are absolutely crazy, but they're also focused. And the only way you get anywhere in life is by being absolutely, totally focused. And it's painful. And most good things in life are going to involve a certain amount of sacrifice. It's a good question. You will not lose out by by doing a mitzvah, and certainly a kiddush hashem. 